20% of the cobalt there is mined by hand, often by young children. Africa is a pretty massive continent. It's actually the second largest one on Earth. That is also why it's home to so many different creatures. But what if it was splitting up entirely? What would happen to its crazy wilderness? The whole continent is a real gold mine in terms of surprises and could possibly be the closest thing we have to Jurassic Park. Africa presents a variety of facts that you might have never heard of, from its crazy tectonic changes to the massive African elephant. Here are 20 things you probably didn't know about Africa. <sighs> Number 20, the fact that Africa is splitting apart due to tectonic changes. Africa is splitting into two pieces. No, we're not talking about some new type of pie or cake. What is being sliced in half is the actual continent located in the Southern Hemisphere. But how? Back in 2004, a 35 mile long crack was discovered in the heart of the Ethiopian desert in Africa. This crack could effectively split the entire continent in two. Can you imagine not one, but two Africas? This crack is called the East African Rift, and it stretches on almost 3,000 kilometers from the Gulf of Aden, which separates Africa and Asia, to Zimbabwe, a country located on the southern part of the continent. The rift is at the junction of three tectonic plates, the Nubian, Somalian, and Arabic ones. But why is this all happening? It all started millions of years ago when tectonic plates began doing their own little things until they ended up splitting apart, creating Africa and South America. This is in fact why South America can perfectly merge geometrically with Africa. Over the years, the Somalian tectonic plate and the larger Nubian tectonic plate were moving apart, and still do. Meanwhile, the Arabian tectonic plate is slowly but surely drifting completely away from Africa. These tectonic changes have actually led to the creation of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. By separating, tectonic plates take away chunks of land and pieces of territories along their path. And this is why Africa is breaking up. No need to pack your bags just yet. Scientists are saying that it'll take another five to 10 million years or so to actually see a proper split. And who knows, new seas or oceans? Anything's possible. Number 19, Africa is home to the world's largest living land animal, the African elephant. Africa's wildlife is incredibly diverse and countless creatures are found on the continent. In fact, the continent is home of the largest living animal in the world, and it isn't the Loch Ness Monster that made its new home in Bamako. The animal in question is the massive African elephant. With a height that reaches about 13 feet, this giant animal usually weighs between 5,000 to 14,000 pounds. African elephants are essentially like trucks roaming around the savanna. The largest one ever recorded was found in Angola, a 13-foot tall friendly giant that weighs around 24,000 pounds. Male elephants are usually more prominent than their female counterparts. The gender of African elephants is, in fact, recognizable by the size of their ivory tusks, those big elongated teeth that serve as tools or defense weapons. Female elephant tusks weigh about 40 pounds each, while male elephants walk around with longer and heavier ones, weighing around 110 to 175 pounds which is roughly equivalent to the weight of two human beings. Because their tusks are made of ivory, a coveted material, elephants have unfortunately become the targets of illegal poachers. These wildlife thieves are threatening the survival of the species. It's a shame because elephants are harmless and incredibly interesting. These mammals exhibit highly intelligent social skills that resemble human interactions. They travel within a herd, usually led by the eldest female. Matriarchy might be the key to a functioning society after all. Elephants are emotional creatures. They form deep bonds and even experience grief when one of their companions or family members. They communicate using their own voices and sometimes their whole bodies with the help of their trunks. Elephants can also send long distance messages using infrasound, their giant ears, which interestingly resemble the shape of the African continent itself, can capture messages sent from miles away. Number 18, 40% of kids between the ages of five and 14 are involved in child labor. Although Africa's wilderness is impressive and rich, the continent suffers from incredible poverty. Many human rights are completely skirted, which leads to important issues regarding the upbringing of youth. Shockingly, 
Nearly 40% of African children aged between 5 and 14 are involved in child labor. This is a serious problem affecting the continent and more particularly sub-Saharan Africa, where almost 48 million children are forced to work every day. Historically speaking, it was common for African children to follow their parents and work within farms or fields where they were taught about working skills and learn about life, some sort of wild style and questionable educational system. However, times have changed and evolution along with progress have proved that not only is child labor avoidable, but should also be forbidden. A 2016 United Nations report informed that almost one out of five African children were involved in child labor, depriving them of getting a proper education and damaging their physical and mental health. The situation is getting seriously alarming as other reports have shown that Africa holds the highest incidence rates of child labor. Some African countries, such as Ghana, have fortunately started to put in place laws to protect children from child labor. Other non-governmental organizations are also providing assistance, support, and education for African youth. They raise awareness on the issue and advocate for the rights of children in Africa. Number 17. On average, people have to walk roughly four kilometers to collect water. Imagine waking up at dawn every morning to fetch gallons of water for the rest of your day. Well, that is what about half of the African population does all week. The whole continent, and more specifically sub-Saharan Africa, suffers from a severe shortage of clean water sources. Every day, thousands of women walk around four kilometers with their children to collect water. They suffer from lifelong back pains by carrying 20-liter jerry cans on top of their heads. And guess what? The collected water is usually unclean or contaminated. In some instances, mothers and children usually have to do the trip several times a day. 15 liters of water is considered to be the bare minimum of water needed for one person to do everything during the day, from bathing to eating and drinking. That's why fetching water is, in some cases, a day-long task that never ends. Thousands of Africans walk at least 30 minutes a day back and forth under unbearable heat. And they do so on rough trails wearing simple rubber shoes or being completely barefoot. Altogether, they spend a total of 200 million hours of walking to fetch water. This is the equivalent of 22,800 years. Talk about Moses and his 40 years in the desert. Try and multiply this biblical episode by 570, and there you have it a regular day in Africa. Number 16, the first heart transplant was performed in Cape Town. In 1967, a 53-year-old grocery store owner named Louis Washkansky suffered from chronic heart disease and needed a heart transplant. He received a brand new heart transplant from a 25-year-old woman. This was the first heart transplant ever performed on a human being, and it was conducted at the Grotes Kour Hospital in Cape Town in South Africa. The operation was done by Dr. Christian Barnard, a surgeon from Cape Town. He learned about transplantation in the United States, where the first successful heart transplant was performed on a dog in 1958. Unfortunately, Louis Washkonsky only survived 18 days after his heart transplant. But the procedure was finally done on a human being and opened brand new opportunities in the medical field. It led to the development of new drugs like cyclosporine. This medication basically lowers organ rejection in a human body and therefore eases organ transplantations. Out of the 10 other patients that the Hrotuskur Hospital welcomed later on, four of them survived for more than a year. Two of them even lived impressively long lives of 13 and 23 years. Now, more than 50,000 heart transplants have been successfully performed in the entire world. Number 15, Africa is home to the world's biggest frog species. Can you imagine a frog as large as a human baby? Well, it actually exists in Africa. That's the Goliath frog, which is also known as Konrawa Goliath. This is the largest frog in the world, and it usually weighs around eight pounds, which is actually heavier than an average human newborn baby. <laughs> no wonder it's named after Goliath, the biblical giant who was, according to its legend, terrorizing an entire town. The Goliath frog is 12 inches tall, which is pretty massive for an amphibian. Don't be fooled by its size. This big frog is completely harmless. They're usually found in Equatorial Guinea and Cameroon. This creature is straight out of a fairy tale and likes to live in dense forests filled with wilderness and humidity. They are actually picky when it comes to choosing a home. They will only settle in Equatorial Forest Fringe, which is surrounded by rivers and parallel to the coast. This part of Africa offers an idyllic amount of water, insects, 
and space. Can't blame the Goliath frog for being this selective. Number 14. It's the biggest single source of gold throughout mining history. Africa is filled with precious resources, and one of them is gold. In fact, Africa is often perceived as the world's largest gold mine. That's right, nearly half of the gold on the planet is mined in Africa. Three of the top five gold-producing nations on the African continent are located in West Africa, which is currently the second largest gold-producing region in the world after China. Back in 2021, Ghana provided more than 116 tons of gold. This country is the sixth largest gold producer in the world. The African gold rush also expands towards the mountainous Witwatersand sand region, which is in South Africa. This location is straight out of an old-fashioned Walt Disney movie. The Witwatersrand Basin is a 3,000-kilometer basin that looks like a natural water park. It is filled with cascades, falls, mountains, wilderness, and gold. And guess what? Gold is not the only precious asset located in South Africa. The country is also famous for having great diamond mines. Botswana is the top diamond-producing country of the whole continent. Number 13. There are over 3,000 shipwrecks off the coast of South Africa. South Africa is also a gold mine in terms of historical facts and legends. More than 3,000 ships have met their fate on the South African coastline. Many sailors took their final breath through what is called the Cape of Good Hope, situated just above Cape Agujas, which is in the southernmost point of the continent. The Cape of Good Hope does bear its name for a reason. For centuries, this sea route is famously referred to as the Graveyard of Ships. Sailing there demands a great deal of luck and a massive amount of hope. Back in the 16th century, the mountains of water that lurk the 3,000-kilometer-long coast were already famous for claiming numbers of ships. Shipwrecks started being recorded in the 1500s, the height of the Portuguese nautical exploration and conquest by sail. Can you believe that the recorded number of lost vessels is equivalent to one shipwreck at each coastline kilometer? Among the victims of South African seas, the Flying Dutchman is the most legendary. It's mysteriously disappeared on a foggy day at Cape Point. Several ships have also vanished without leaving one single trace. Though Arata's disappearance in 1909 is a good example, with each tragedy comes a good story. Between isolated lighthouses and violent shipwrecks, legends are sprawling. Number 12. Africa covers 30 million square kilometers. Africa is a massive piece of land and is actually the second largest continent after Asia. To give you an idea, Africa is nearly 30 million square kilometers, which basically represents 20% of the world's land area. Africa is home to 54 countries and the Sahara, which is the world's largest hot desert. The continent is surrounded by two oceans, the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. North Africa borders a big chunk of the Mediterranean Sea, whilst its eastern coastline touches the Red Sea. Africa is very dense and quite vast. That this is probably why the continent is usually divided into five distinct regions. North Africa, South Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, and West Africa. Africa is also the second most populated continent after Asia. Although it's filled with natural resources such as gold or oil, the continent has one of the poorest populations in the world. This is partially due to its super complicated economic landscape where historical colonialism, corruption, and climate change are key factors that are not really playing in the continent's favor. However, Africa's population welcomes a considerable amount of young people. This makes it an advantageous territory in the global economy. Young population is synonymous to work, dynamism, and action within societies. Number 11, Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest point in Africa. Did you know that it actually snows in Africa? Africa is home of several mountains, and this is where you might be lucky enough to see some African snowfall. The highest one is Mount Kilimanjaro, which is 13,340 feet high. It's located in Tanzania, where nearby mountains attract many tourists and visitors chasing incredible landscapes and wildlife. Mount Kilimanjaro also attracts a great number of professional climbers in need of a big challenge. It is considered to be one of the most difficult climbing expeditions in the world. In fact, nearly 10 people each year trying to reach its top, whilst an average of 1,000 climbers are rescued from fatal accidents. Pretty scary. The highest point on Mount Kilimanjaro is called Uhuru, which means freedom in Swahili. The trail is rough, but the volcano has been asleep for more than 360,000 years. It's being kept cool by an amazing snow hat layered on its top. Though, 
According to scientists, this white layer of snow will most definitely disappear in the next 20 years because of global warming. Number 10. El Azizain, Libya, was recorded as the hottest place in the world. The hottest place on the entire planet might be located in Africa. For 90 years, a town called El Azizia, which is situated in Libya, used to hold the world's heat record with a temperature of 58 degrees Celsius, reached in 1922. However, a few researchers started questioning the accuracy of this recorded temperature and the city's position as the hottest place on Earth. After years of hot debates, har, 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 the World Meteorological Organization actually put together a team of scientists to investigate the matter. They reanalyzed the temperature reached in 1922, and as it turned out, that El Azizia's 58 degrees Celsius was not exactly accurate. However, another similar heat record was held in California, in the National Park of Death Valley, to be exact, where a temperature of 56.7 degrees Celsius was reached in 1913. El Azizia might not be the most boiling place on the planet, but it's still unbearably hot under the sun. Africa still counts some of the hottest spots in the world. The Californian record could potentially be beaten in the next couple of years since global warming is threatening numerous countries with massive heat waves. Number 9. Lake Malawi boasts the largest number of fish species. Africa counts a number of different water sources. More than 677 lakes run their courses on the continent. Among them, Lake Malawi is the largest. It is actually the fifth largest lake on the entire planet. Stretching around 365 miles, Lake Malawi runs through three entire countries, Malawi, Tanzania, and Mozambique. This giant pool is more than 30 kilometers large and is 700 meters deep. No wonder why an astronomical number of species can call it home. It's heaven for biodiversity. Between 500 to 1,000 types of fish swim the Malawi waters which is more than any other lake in the world. Some serious creatures can be found in Lake Malawi. For instance, certain fish are bigger than humans. The Malawi catfish grow up to 1.5 meters long, and that's only its regular size. Some are much bigger. The lake is also home to more than 700 cichlid fish species. They are usually colorful little things that only live in freshwater, but be careful, they can bite. And guess what? Nearly all of those species are exclusively found within Lake Malawi. They are locally referred to as mbuna, meaning rockfish, as those colorful guys like rocky areas for the lake. So you know which spots to avoid if you ever go for a dip in Malawi. Number eight, there are 280,000 windmills in South Africa. Many African countries experience power cuts on a daily basis. Imagine being in the middle of your day and suddenly all the lights of your office shut down. Even worse. You lose all your files because your computer suddenly stops working. Certain factories based in Africa sometimes have to call it a day in the middle of work because of a lack of electricity. This occurs quite often in African countries, and this is why big electricity companies and providers, such as ESCOM, have decided to use some of the continent's natural resources to generate electricity. These initiatives might not only overcome power cut issues, but might also prepare the continent for a greener future where energy can be allied to an ecological consciousness. It might be a win-win. Windmills are now proliferating in Africa, reaching a total of 280,000. This is a lot. To give you an idea, South Africa now surpasses the Netherlands, which is usually referred to as the windmill country, with 10,000 windmills. Number seven, Sudan has more pyramids than Egypt. When it comes to pyramids, you might instantly think of Egyptian mummies, Cleopatra, or even the Sphinx. But did you know that most of the world's pyramids are found in Africa? African Sudan has over 223 pyramids, which is double the number of Egypt, which has only ever recorded the total 118 pyramids. But why would so many of them been constructed on African soil? The construction of the Miro pyramids, as they're called, started in 1070 BC and went on until 350 BC, which is 500 years after the Egyptians built their own. Better late than never, the Miro Pyramid was heralded by the Kingdom of Kus, an ancient Nubian civilization who owned the Nile River. Much like their Egyptian counterparts, these pyramids look like towering monuments made of sandstone and granite. There are some sort of religious chapels and shelter tombs, as well as carvings, drawings, and writings in hieroglyphs and Meroitic script. These ornaments are incredibly resourceful in terms of history, 
As they inform about the Miro's lifestyle, an old city bordering the Nile, which was filled with important and wealthy people. Number six, it has one of the oldest universities in the world. Believe it or not, not one but two of the oldest universities in the world were founded in Africa. Once upon a time, Africa was home to one of the most prestigious Ivy Leagues of the 12th century, the University of Timbuktu. This institution was located in Mali, and the city of Timbuktu was even referred to as the Little Paris because of all the scholars and great minds it attracted back then. The University of Timbuktu was created in 982 AD. Although Africa has negative education rates compared to other countries, it is also home to the oldest university still operating. It is the University of al Karawin, situated in the Moroccan city of Fez. al Karawin University was founded in 859 AD by a Tunisian-born Muslim woman. Her name was Fatima El Fikhri, and she was a real visionary. Back in the days, she decided to use father's generous inheritance to build a place for education. al Karawin University was born and gathered many great minds around progress, cultural, and scholar exchanges. Incredible. Number five, Africa's Sahara Desert is bigger than the USA. Imagine a desert that is as big as an entire continent. There is on Africa, and it's called the Sahara. It was named after the Arabic word Sahara, which means desert. The Sahara is larger than the United States, period, mic drop, and is almost the size of the entirety of North America. With its 9.4 million square kilometers, the Sahara is the biggest hot desert in the world and the third largest one on the planet. But who knows, it might soon be the greatest desert on the planet as it is expanding. No joke, the Sahara is actually growing half a mile every month towards Southern African regions. It currently covers a third of the entire continent. Will it eventually cover the entire territory? Who knows? What we know for sure is that the Sahara has one of the harshest and driest weathers in the world. Fortunately, an oasis offering drinkable water can be found to freshen up. There are about 90 major oases in the Sahara. Thanks to those, people can actually live in the desert. Sahara's inhabitants are called the Sahrawis, and they're usually nomads and move from one place to another. Number four, not one, but two Nobel Prize winners lived on the same street in South Africa. There is a street in Africa that was home to two of the greatest Nobel Prize winners in the world. Imagine the probability of having two incredible, world-renowned men living a couple of meters from each other. That happened on Vilakazi Street, which is located in the city of Soweto in South Africa. On this super famous street were living Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. Mandela was a former president and famous historic leader who dedicated his life fighting against South Africa's racially segregated political system. He won the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1993. Desmond Tutu was an Anglican archbishop and South African human rights activist. He also received the Nobel Prize back in 1984 for his peaceful fight against the apartheid. Living there might increase your chances at winning a Nobel Prize. One can always dream. Number three, Lesotho is the only country on earth that has no territory below 1,000 meters above sea level. Africa is home to many countries and they all offer different landscapes. One country in particular consistently floats above sea level. It is called Lesotho in Southern Africa. This place is basically a total enclave of hills and mountains. It has zero territory below 1,000 meters sea level. The lowest point of Lesotho is about 14,000 meters high which is the highest, lowest point of any country in the world, when you visit this country, you're basically constantly high. Lesotho covers more than 30,000 square kilometers of rocky territories. Its borders are mountainous and have a total length of 900 kilometers. More than 75% of the territory is constituted of mountains. The rest of its 25% is considered lowlands, which are hills stacked upon each other. Imagine the views you can reach. No wonder why the whole country is often referred to as the roof of Africa. Some people even call it the Switzerland of Africa. Number two, Nigeria has the highest number of twins born in the world. Africa is one of the most populated places on earth, but it also holds the world record of twin births on the entire planet. More specifically, it is Nigeria, one of Africa's largest countries that has the highest number of twins born in the world. The whole country is even called the land of twins which sounds like a cool sci-fi book title. The center of it all is 
Igbo Ora, a little Nigerian town where you might go crazy and think you're seeing double. In Igbo Ora, there are an average of 50 sets of twins every 1,000 births. This tiny place makes West Africa the region with the highest twin birth rates in the whole globe. But why? It probably has to do with genes, and the secret DNA ingredient might just lie within the Yoruba ethnic group who live there. A real twin culture is engraved within the Yoruba. They usually use the same two options of name for their kids. Twin babies are either called Taiwo or Kehinde, depending on which of the babies came out of the womb first. Number one, Creepy Crawly was invented in South Africa. You might be familiar with Creepy Crawly, a company specializing in pool cleaning machines. This business was started 40 years ago by an Australian family. However, did you know that this world-famous company actually finds its roots in Africa? Creepy Crawley's pool cleaning action, which is what it's most famous for, was created by Ferdinand Chauvier. This man was a hydraulic engineer from South Africa. He decided to find easier alternatives when it came to cleaning swimming pools. Ferdinand Chauvier invented the machine and its famous underwater cleaning process in South Africa. It hit the market in 1976 when it was designed by Creepy Crawley in Australia and quickly gained in popularity. Terry Jackson, the founder of the company, started exploring an improved Aussie version around the world. Next time you see a Creepy Crawley pool cleaner, think about Chauvier, whose brilliant idea saved many back pains over the years. Will Africa ever break? What else could make the continent break completely? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.